Okay, hello, hello. Uh, let's see. Step aside, brain, you're in the way. How's this working? Uh, oh, okay. Um, well, hello, hello, I'm Susan. Um, I was having a conversation the other day with our head of PR, uh, Lee Gunther, and during our conversation, we started talking about calculated risks, which was the inspiration for this talk. But over the weekend, I ran a first draft past Joe D'Souza at White & Kennedy to get his take. Now, don't steal him. Uh, but I'll read what he said. Uh, it's quite didactic in that it talks in general terms about the benefits of going with the gut rather than overthinking stuff. Would be cool, I think, to dial up the Susan Hoffman-ness, not in a showing off, egocentric way, but in a way that perhaps gives a clear sense of your own journey and how you learn to follow the instincts rather than the rules. How you stumbled upon the power of uncertainty that often led to greater work. Put yourself out there a bit so that the picture, so they're seeing you is what I'm suggesting. See, people love vulnerability, love to know that even successful people have failed along the way. Believe me, I've failed a lot. <laughs> I, it makes us all human. Whoops. So thank you, Joe, for doing my speech. I should probably stop there. Um, but I digressed. So what the hell is a calculated risk? What does it even mean? Can you even calculate a risk? If it's calculated, is it even a risk? All this leads to overthinking. So creativity needs risk. The more we were talking about, the more I got heated and climbed up on my soapbox because it sums up a problem in our industry. There's too much calculation and too much thinking and no risk. So I suggest leaving risk alone. As Dan Wyden so eloquently said, if you don't think so well, don't think too much. But the real question should be about the things we can't calculate. Did it make you feel something? I'll be honest with everyone here, but don't tell the clients. I can only operate on feelings, and I don't think I'm the only one. Who else? I'll give you three guesses in the last two don't count, our audience. Consumers don't want to be told anymore what to do or anything anymore. They want to feel something and decide for themselves if it's a brand they even care about and want to have a relationship with. I found this quote the other day, and it kind of sums it up for me. Uh, the depth of our feeling is the size of our life. I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, but isn't this our job? Shouldn't it be this simple? So I'm going to go on and show some work um, and uh, explain if after each one of them, some things that I feel kind of are the depth of feeling. Okay, let's hope this works. I know I'm short. I should have pulled those down myself. Oops. Can you turn the volume up? Hmm, that didn't quite work. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, so that was a Nike ad. Um, there's actually some copy on it that didn't seem to play. Um, well, that was a risk uh, that we did years ago. Um, and Nike had wanted to uh, start appealing to women. So we call this jockstrap. It never got done because Nike pretty much kicked us out of the room 
and said, are you kidding me? What are we going to do with the men's business if you run this? So that was a risk. Uh, I hope the other one's working better, but let's see. I show this spot quite often because, uh, unfortunately, we still have issues today that um, even though this was done about 30 years ago, it's still pertinent. And this probably most people should be familiar with, but it was. Here's a little song for anyone who's ever hated in the key of grrr. Can hate be good? Can hate be great? Can hate be good? Can hate be great? Can hate be something we don't hate? We'd like to know why it is so that certain diesels must be slow and thwack and thrum and plong and hum and clatter clat. Something, change something, make something better. Oh, isn't it just bliss when a diesel goes like this? Sing it like you hate it. Baba hate something. Baba change something. Baba hate something. Change something. Make something better. And this spot pretty much speaks for itself. This next spot is a P&G spot, and they're always great about really telling the truth. Oh, child, things are gonna get easier. Oh, child, things will get brighter. Oh, child, things are gonna get easier. Oh, child.
gonna get easier And this next film uh, is a creative team out of Portland, uh, Asian creative team. And they were very upset about what was going on with the Asian community in America. And they came to us with um, an idea that originally we did put out on the internet, but um, we eventually realized when more problems were happening with the Asian community that we really needed to get out in the world. So. Um, yeah, this is, there were variations of this, and this ran uh, online probably about a year ago. But um, the voiceover is the writer. A word, please. A word is, just a word is, just a word is, not just a word, not once it's been heard, it becomes a belief, a reason for someone's grief, fear, confusion, causes actions, a sign on a restaurant, window, Chinese not welcome here, a slur on a car door, fucking chink, go home, disappear, a clenched fist meets her back, her arms, her face, get out of our United States, her face, her face, her face, a face spit on, kicked on, painted on, disinfectant, sprayed on acid, splashed on knife, slashed on. No, no, you're right. You weren't holding that knife. How could you have known? How could you possibly know what a word could do unless it was said about you? How could you know that negative comments about people of Asian descent increased 167% a week after a word was said? Now, it's too late to take it back. Now, we're just barely keeping track of over a thousand reports of discrimination and counting, and that's just counting the ones that were reported. What about the ones that were left unsaid? How many thought this can't be happening? And if it is, should I even say anything? I'm just grateful to be here. So what actually happened? How could you know? How could you know what it feels like to call your parents, not just to talk, not to ask them, hey, how was your walk, but to ask them, please don't go outside. There's something happening worldwide. Mom, cover up, not just your nose, your mouth, but your eyes, your hair, your voice. You hide everything about yourself. Don't let them see you. Don't let them recognize you. This virus does not discriminate. People do. But hey, it's just a word, right? How could you know what a word could do unless it was said about you? Unless you were me? Then maybe you'd call it COVID-19. Uh, and then uh, this last one is, uh, it just broke today for Nike, a women's Euro spot. Um.
So you're the first ones actually to see this. Um, and seeing this work, was your brain or your emotion sitting in your seat? Why is this important? It's simple. This is where creative advertising lies. I'm constantly trying to tell clients to leave the thinking aside when you view work. Let your emotions lead the conversation. Tell me first, how did it make you feel? If you feel something, the audience will feel something. I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Stefan Sagmeister, an incredible designer who published a book called Made You Look. Just three very simple words on how to judge creativity. Made you look. We have a wall at YDNK that says fail harder. Now, it's been a bit controversial because it makes people uncomfortable. I remember once Dan telling me my problem was I was afraid to fail. And I said, yeah, damn right, everybody is. But failure, it's really a safety net. It gives us permission to take risks, to push ourselves, to surprise ourselves. It's not about calculated risks. The headline to this is, I'm here to help you fail. And I really do feel that. I think that's the best gift as an agency, that we can help people that want to do something amazing. It's that. You have to be willing to fail because in that process, something else comes out that you did not expect from a voice that is not yours and that may come back again if you're kind. I remember showing a Nike client, Mike Wilski, some ideas, and his immediate response was, I didn't really understand the third idea, but it intrigues me, so let's go with that one. I know those days are gone, but this kind of thinking is how we get to better work. I found this quote that Dan said 34 years ago, and the belief is still current today. We started as a ship of fools, and that I firmly firmly believe is why we have succeeded. We were struggling to figure out what an advertising agency actually was. And our one and only client, Nike, was trying to get a grip on what a client was supposed to do with one. We were both incredibly stupid. That was the key. And in closing, I just want to circle back with uh, Joe's email to just be your Susan Hoffman-ness. My Susan Hoffman-ness comes out in many ways in the office. Just ask anyone the agency. But the one thing I am, I am is boldly honest, sometimes even to a fault. And as I was writing this, I realized I'm writing this not only to stand up here today, but I'm also talking to Susan Hoffman. With the new advertising environment, it's gotten harder even for me. So don't for a moment think I have it all figured out. As creatives, it's a constant challenge for all of us to make work we are proud of. So don't fear risk. See risk as an essential ingredient in the creative ambition. Keep up the fight, even when it seems impossible. And most important, have fun. And this is a plaque that my Uncle Punch had on his door every time he went out to play golf which he wasn't a very good golfer, let's win today. So I just want to say to everybody, let's win today. Thank you. <laughs>